Hi, my name is Bianca Lopez and I'm a contributing editor at Hot Topics. Welcome to the CIO Roundtable, and we're going to be talking about the IT and the infinite game. So John, tell us a little bit about who you are, and then we'll go around the table and get this conversation started. Sure, I'm currently uh, Chief Architect at TalkTalk Talk Group, previously been uh, CTO at the FT and Dow Jones. I'm Darren Norfolk, I'm the uh, EMEA Managing Director for Rackspace, and we are the leader in multi-cloud services. I'm Andy Bellamy, I'm Group CIO of Impelum Group. We provide uh, managed services in the staffing industry. My name is Ian Cohen, I'm the Chief Product and Technology Officer at Addison Lee Group in the UK, um, and I also was the CTO with the FT. Okay, so we won't talk about FT, but we will talk about this topic about digital transformation. One of my pet peeves in the industry that it sounds like it's something you do once and you're kind of done, as if it was a process. What are your guys' thoughts about this when you think about talking of digital transformation as a CIO? Um, I think it's interesting. So when you ask people what they mean by that, um, most people don't actually know what they're doing with digital transformation. So what exactly is it they're doing? Are they just being, um, are they transforming the business? And what does transforming mean? So are you selling in a different way or are you just being uh, less rubbish on the internet, which seems to be what a lot of people think they need. They need a, uh, a chief uh, uh, product officer or uh, uh, someone who's, who's focused on specific areas of the business and then they forget about the, the technical legacy they have across most of, much of the estate they have. So I find, I, I find it interesting to ask people what exactly are they doing and what will be different at the end of it, so what sort of journey you're going on. And um, operationally, how does it affect the business? So. Is, is this a, a, something that's done, you, you finish and you've, you've finished digitally transforming or is it something which is a continuous improvement of your, of your entire business? So I, I think it affects more than technology, it affects the whole, the whole company. You have to think about how it affects other roles, how it, feels, how it affects marketing, how it affects um, people in finance, the way they think. Um, so th there's lots of things that I, I find interesting to ask people exactly what are they doing with digital transformation. And, um, I've had a variety of interesting different answers. <laughs> it, it, it's a little bit weird to think of digital transformation as not something that is just the way we do business. It just happens to be, what, what's your, what's your definite, like could you have a definition? Of I, 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 I'm gonna try not to say I agree with John most of the time, um, <laughs> but I absolutely hate the phrase. It, it's right up there with business IT alignment in my list of phrases you should never use ever again. Um, for, for exactly that point, you put 10 people in a room, ask them what digital transformation is, you'll get 12 answers. The, it's being used to uh, obfuscate a whole load of uh, things that as an industry we have done poorly, that we are now trying to do better. Um, and at the very heart of that, it's how we engage with customers and consumers of our products and services, which haven't been our main focus and should have been our main focus and now we're saying well let's do digital transformation that's a great way of sorting that out some great client experience veneer yeah, around uh, it it's you know it, it, th th there's an imperative that we're just losing in this let's call it digital transformation and of course it you know it, it doesn't have an end because no one can define what the end is anyway so please park it and let's move, move on to actually doing something I think, I think there, are, there are some businesses, uh, such as startups or sort of major crisis hit turnarounds, that you do get that element of a one-shot um, go. But, but for most businesses, certainly the businesses I work in, it's just lots of incremental changes. So you're trying to, it's a bit of push-pull. So technology, IT, digital are pushing the business to make those incremental changes. But also the business and the markets and the clients are pulling change and new technologies but, it, but often it's just a whole load of incremental things. So it's an evolution, not a, a revolution. I think also the other bit that I think through is the cultural change. So if you have that customer at the heart of what you're doing, taking employees through a journey of how are we going to help customers, whether that be using automation, it can just help them understand the direction we're going to to satisfy customers, as opposed to like we're just doing digitalization or whatever the term is and no one really understand it. So I think it can help break down some of those barriers and some of that fear to be able to be a catalyst of change. Now, we are, con we are fundamentally turning that model on its head. Now we're saying, from here, from what the customer experience is, into our organisation, 
That's the journey that matters, and then we iterate our operation, we iterate our product, and we iterate our service based on that. So you don't have to worry about, you know, what's the shape of... It's not that you don't have to worry about what the shape of your infrastructure is or what the shape of your engineering is. You should celebrate what the shape of your engineering and infrastructure is and celebrate the fact that you are iterating it based on what you're learning about your customers and how they consume your products as opposed to what you did in the past, which is throw something out there and hope for the best. And it, look at that journey of value all the time as you're changing that legacy. Is that is that is that a is that the tough part that you're trying to get to? Is like how do I? Because I think that's great, but it's it's a hard thing to do when you're trying to shift a really big I think already existing. I think there's a cultural thing. So some companies um, that I engage with have the culture to be able to be very dynamic and change the legacy aspect, but there are some that don't, and some are, are very large organisations that, that can't make that change all in one go. And so that's where you sometimes see that innovation around maybe a digital unit or, or whatever they want to call it, to be able to do that transformation. How do you keep track of all these new technologies that are coming? Because often you'll send some SVP out to a, to a conference, they'll find, fall in love with a shiny toy, and here it is. Can you add it to the stack, please, and thank you? Yeah, I think it, I, I mean, I think it, there's almost information overload. Everyone's trying to sell you the new, the new way of doing something. They're trying to revolutionize your business, even if you don't want it. I think you've just got to, You've got to take a number of inputs. You've got to. Uh, what we tend to do is, is start small. So look at look at the the pilots, try things, test them. Um, to be honest, a lot fail. And then the ones, then the trick is the ones that succeed. You then really get behind. And and we would typically have a literally a couple of bigger implementations focusing on um, expanding and rolling out digital technology or, or transformation. And how as an IT provider or, or thinking of IT and technology, can you, can you fail? Where, where is that? Is that fail on failing fast and failing multiple projects or picking the right technology to fail with? Yeah, like, how I, do I think, you? I think every, everyone sort of has the sort of fail fast thing, but yeah. um, when you do fail fast, it sometimes hurts. So I think you've, you've, got to, you've got to try and limit the damage. And I think it's also contextual. If you've got a business that's, that's doing okay and you're looking for those incremental changes, you perhaps don't have to take the size of risk than say if you're in a turnaround situation or, or where the market is just fundamentally changing underneath you. So, so lots of little failures that you can sort of quietly bury and explain away and then pick the nugget that comes along and then really go with that. So it's, so it's about picking, it's picking the winners really. So fail fast is great. I, I mean, I, 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 I like hearing people talk about fail fast. The, the problem is it's only, it's only part of the story. So. Yeah, the actual bit should be fail fast and learn even faster. Um, there are lots of companies out there that fail spectacularly, and if they don't learn from it, then what's the point? The bit I'm much more interested in is actually succeed fast, um, because that's actually where the nuggets are. There's great learning in fail fast, but actually if all you do is study failure, you learn how things fail. If you study success, which has a completely different dynamic, you learn about success. So fail fast and learn, succeed fast and do more is where I think actually this thing called digital transformation has helped. And it's helped because more than ever now we have the opportunity to engage with customers and with clients in a way that we never had before. If there's one thing that the technology has done, it's accelerated and short shortened the feedback loop. So now you can do something, you can put it in the hands of a consumer, they can consume your service and give you immediate feedback. And that's great, that's, that's something that we used to wait forever for, and now we can do it immediately. And when you're thinking of that, how do you change that culture to even bring people about? Because sometimes an IT successful project means cuts jobs or automation and things that often terrify people. Yeah, you, you do start to think differently when you think about how do you actually reshape it constantly so this, uh, this idea of iteration we've mentioned already but how are you constantly reshaping things to be more effective and more uh, not just cost effective but more effective in delivering speed and agility to the organization and most companies are, are striving for that when they talk about digital transformation they're talking about moving faster ways in which they can get to market why can't we do things quicker company x is doing it why can't we do it and i think if you if you look at the whole understanding of your um, of the technology you've built over time you'll find certain constraints and certain you know the theory of constraints is, is still very relevant right which is the point that actually slows you down the most and I think if you had that culture to do that I think that's that's the best way to do it 
And I think if you can then get the, even if, even if you say we're talking about innovation in small steps earlier, you may go and innovate on a part of that customer journey, but using the people that aren't to be able to really influence and get them involved is absolutely the best way. I just think, in my mind, where I see some of this challenge, there's still people that operate in that way that's slightly different to that. Amazing. Well, I have to thank you, gentlemen. And this is it. Let's go fight the infinite game of CIO roundtables and, and issues to come. My name is Bianca Lopez, and thank you very much.